Good evening and a very warm welcome to First Issues. The festive season is well and truly upon us and many are already planning how to spend their hard-earned money and leave days on some well-deserved recreational fun. There are a number of options out there. You could go home to your home village to see relatives bearing gifts and clothes and setting off fireworks on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. You could decide to go camping at any one of the natural wonders in our country. Understanding, of course, that camping can range all the way from roughing it in a makeshift tent to five-star treatment with all the luxury trimmings. Another option is to aim for the more exotic. Look further afield to modern or natural landscapes not found within our borders. Large cosmopolitan cities, foreign architectural wonders, beaches, waterfalls and terrain unfamiliar to the average Motswana. These, however, do not come cheap and most consumers fully appreciate that it could take years of planning and saving for them to become attainable, if ever. And herein lies the gap that vacation clubs have tried to fill, promising affordable family vacation to exotic faraway places. However, there are some who advise consumers not to be lured by beautiful images of sunshine and beaches into a financial hole they cannot get out of. Vacation companies have steadily gained negative attention from consumer bodies, both here at home and in neighboring South Africa, where 41 vacation clubs were under investigation for issues such as misleading advertisements, misrepresentation of products, unreasonable contractual terms and the prohibition of cancellation of contracts as a result of their eternity nature. Richard Harriman of Consumer Watchdog Botswana shares the sentiments of his South African counterparts and is here this evening to give reasons as to why. But so is Wandile Sibanda, marketing manager at the Holiday Club Botswana to address these very concerns. And in a further step to present a holistic view of this issue so that you, the viewer at home, can make an educated decision as to whether this is a product that can be of value to you this holiday season and the next, both pleased and dissatisfied members of this club are here to share their experiences. It will most certainly offer you some food for thought and we would love to hear your opinion on tonight's topic on both our Facebook and Twitter page or in a few days on our YouTube channel page where this episode and a host of previous ones are placed for your enjoyment after Wednesday's repeat has aired. Settle in, invite a friend to watch with you as when we return we get straight into it. Welcome back to First Issues as both the advocates and attractors of vacation company The Holiday Club share their thoughts on the product. Consumer advocate Richard Harriman has a litany of grievances about vacation clubs in general. Before we address the issues of value for money, recruitment techniques and availability that Richard has raised concerning companies like the Holiday Club, we ask Wandile Sibanda to help us understand how their particular system works. I'll start off with how it was established. This was in 1971. We started off as a timeshare. How a timeshare works, say in layman's terms, if you are sitting around with a group of friends and you're talking about holidays and you all discover you go on holiday, say to Durban every year, and you're paying hotel accommodation year in and year out, you then think, okay, why don't we just buy a house in Durban and furnish it? And instead of paying for hotel accommodation, we simply stay in a house. How you share that house or the ownership, you could say, okay, January, the house belongs to, to you, February, it's someone else, and so on and so forth. Except with timeshare, it's done on a larger scale. You'd buy a week at a specific resort. You find you can actually exchange that week, except the process is a bit intricate. So the problem with timeshare really was that lack of flexibility. You don't want to keep going back to the same place every year. That's where Holiday Club evolved. We now use a, a point system. So when you join the Holiday Club, you invest in what we call points, okay? Whichever points you invest in initially, that becomes your allocation every year for the rest of your life. Say, for instance, you decide, okay, you want to buy 10 points. 
hypothetically say they cost 30,000, right? You pay them off, those points now belong to you. Automatically every year you're given 10 points to use. Now all the resorts have point ratings for each week of the year, which vary according to the standard of the resort. We use a diamond rating. It varies according to the location of the resort and the size of the unit. So when you want to go on holiday, you simply choose where you want to go, see the points you need, and book. As you use your points, you deduct them. If you don't use them up for one year, you can accumulate to the following year. So in that way, you will never have to pay for your holiday accommodation. You simply use your points. Consumer advocate Richard Harriman has a litany of grievances about vacation clubs in general. There's been a number of issues with the, the way certain companies operate. We've had, over the years, dozens of complaints uh, about, for instance, Hotel Express International, South African company. They offer a discount scheme. And what happens is they phone you in the evening, they cold call you, and one of their salespeople tries to sell you membership this, of the scheme. Now, this is big business. It happens an awful lot. But we've heard of probably a few dozen times when someone in Botswana has received this call and they, they, they perhaps like the idea, it's being sold well, and then the salesperson on the phone says, just give me your debit card number or your credit card number and I'll check to see if you're eligible to join. Or sometimes they say, give me your details and I'll check to see if you're eligible for gold club or platinum club, whatever they call it, mm -hmm. membership. And even though these smart people, smart, educated, professional people know better, in order to find out if they're eligible, they hand over their debit card details mm. or their credit card details. And guess what? They get charged. Even though sometimes they've asked specifically, you're not going to charge me, are you? No, 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 we're just checking if you're eligible. And we've had a number of cases where people then get charged. And then they have an almighty battle to get their money back. They've come through to us on a number of occasions. That's helped. They've been refunded. Now, I'm not suggesting this is, that this company does that deliberately. I think what's happening is their salespeople are getting out of hand. They're, they're going too far, because I assume they're paid on commission. Yes. They get a percentage, and then maybe not being as scrupulous as they should be in following the rules. So I don't blame Hotel Express International for what's happening, but I do criticize them for stopping it from happening mm. again. And that happens a number of times. There's also, I think my concern is that with a number of the holiday clubs where you join and it's a timeshare scheme, I think there's, consumers are often a little misled about how easy it'll be to actually get the benefits they think they're going to. Uh, it's almost impossible very often to book a holiday during school holidays or at Christmas or at Easter, mm -hmm. which is the time most people want to go on holiday. And there's no space, so you have to find time during school term or away from public holidays, which is often a good time to go. But if you've got kids in school, that's not the right time to go on holiday. So it's not always as, as easy and as flexible as you'd think. And I also have, in the past, we've, um, we've been very critical of some companies for some of the things they put in their contracts, which I think are... Uh, uh, how can I put this diplomatically? <laughs> uh, wrong. Yeah. There's a holiday club called The Holiday Club. Now, we've had a number of discussions with them in the past. Um, their contract, their terms and conditions, I've got a copy I downloaded this morning. Um, it says, if I may, I'll read it to you. This is from this morning. It says that each holder, that's holder of a policy, irrevocably undertakes to be bound by this constitution and to comply diligently with the provisions hereof and the rules issued pursuant her hereto. Irrevocably. Irrevocably means it cannot be revoked. And Never. this is the criticism we've made of them. And it's not just us. If you look at uh, their websites, consumer support websites in South Africa, where lots of people report that they can't leave. It's irrevocable. It's a lifetime contract. Um, and I'm not a lawyer, but lawyers I've spoken to, when I say lifetime contracts, they think that's hilarious. Well, what is this lifetime contract? You can't be in a contract for life. Um, 
if you sign a, a lease for your house, to rent a house, or a cell phone contract, or you're buying something on credit, you shouldn't do that, but if you do buy something on credit, there's a fixed term. It's two years, three years, five years. Maybe a lease on a commercial property might be 10 years. But it will end. Even contracts like marriage mm -hmm. can end if it goes wrong. But the Holiday Club, it can't. It's irrevocable. For life. For life. And so many people have come to us with the Holiday Club memberships, and in South Africa as well, where they say, look, I've changed my mind. I've been a member for a number of years. Uh, you can keep my points. You can keep my money. I'll pay till the end of the year. But then I want to leave. Thank you. I just want to walk away. I don't want to think back. I just want to leave. And they're told, no. This is not how it works. It is irrevocable. Now, I think that's wrong. I think that's legally dubious um, as a non-lawyer. Uh, I think it's, as a consumer advocate, I think it's simply unacceptable that that sort of contract should, they should try and enforce that sort of thing. Um, and they don't explain that at the beginning. Almost every contract you sign, someone will say, this is a two-year contract for your cell phone, mm. or you're signing a lease and it's for three years. It's open. It says so in the contract. It doesn't hide it away under the word irrevocably. Um, and I think that is unacceptable. I think that shouldn't be permitted, and I think it's wrong of any company to operate that way. With the matter of questionable recruitment techniques having been put forth, and also as a means of introduction, we asked the members of the Holiday Club present here this evening how and when they signed up for lifetime membership. I was invited by someone to a presentation. I was just told to attend a presentation and yeah, well, there was a gentleman who came in and presented um, benefits of being a holiday club member and then we signed up. You know, I've always heard about holiday club from, from my days in Zikibaraka Koyarun FM where they had a very aggressive marketing strategy and they'll bring you in young as we were, to a room and tell us about uh, this great opportunity to be able to go on, on holiday. And Botswana being very untrusting at the time, I've been discarding them over the years until um, a friend of mine, Res Khorwan, was telling me about um, you know, how he gets to go on holiday year in, year out through this, uh, this point system. And as you get older, and you travel and every year you want to relax your, your mind and your body. I, I then decided, while I was playing soccer, some guy then asked, uh, hey, listen, I've, I've, I got these points, he's a Ghanaian guy. You must buy them for your family because my children are older now. And I think for you it will be the perfect gift for you to give your wife. <laughs> and uh, I bought these points from, from a friend. And as they say, the rest is history. Welcome back to First Issues as we discuss vacation clubs. Earlier in the program, Richard Harriman of Consumer Watchdog Botswana pointed out that the term irrevocable within these contracts implies that come what may, a member will be liable to pay their annual subscription fees until death. Richard says not even a legal marriage contract is irrevocable and raises the matter of ethics behind such a stipulation in a commercial agreement. As you may have already noticed, one of our Holiday Club members has chosen to remain anonymous as he is yet to resolve his dealings with the company. Unlike others present here this evening, he has not enjoyed his membership and has in fact requested to cancel his irrevocable contract. The issue is that you can't say to Holiday Club, look, I want out and you know, let's cancel, let's, let's set aside the, the contract and see how I can get some sort of refund. They will say, um, you have to find someone that you can, that you can sell uh, your package to. Um, if it was that easy, I would opt out. Because like I was saying, it, 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 it's a bit restrictive in terms of where you can go and, and, and what you can do. So um, all the money that I, I, I've spent so far and the money that I keep spending, I'd rather, you know, spend it as and when 
um, to go on, on holidays of my choice at places of my own desire. Wandile puts forth the Holiday Club's stance on the issue of lifetime membership. Well, when most people join, they are looking at the future. It's, this is similar to actually owning a home, except this home is for holiday purposes. So you are, you are looking at guaranteeing your holiday accommodation for the rest of your life, to know that at least every year, until I'm old and grey, I'll be able to take a holiday. And at the end of it all, if you run into financial difficulties, you can actually sell your holiday club shares. So they're actually an asset. And when you sell, you'll be looking at the price at that time, because the price of the points keeps, keeps going up. You find people who joined when we started here in Botswana, which is 1990, if they choose to, to sell their points now, they are making a major killing because the prices have over tripled. Are our satisfied club members aware of this cause? Were they aware of it even at the time they signed the contract? I fully understood it because it took me about two months, a year, I mean a, a month or so to actually sign the contract. Yes, I'm fully aware of it. I bought my points from someone whose kids have gotten older. Holiday Club makes a lot of sense. For us who have got young kids, I've got many more years of travel. However, points are always sellable on the market. And when the kids grow older and you feel now you want to do more smaller holidays where it's not the whole family, then it's really easy for you to offload the, the points. In Botswana, this is a new phenomenon, but in South Africa, and I think it's really growing here. Uh, people must always look for secondary sh uh, shares or points in the market because you can make a real bargain like I did with Mr. Kwashi. But yes, it's a life-long contract. When the kids are young, I don't want to think about it a little bit later. Maybe circumstances may change, but I think it's just like any other contract. That's, that's the business model, and I've got total respect for it. But it'll, it'll be easy for me now uh, to be able to offload my points. And make, and make and get my money back. Consumer advocates in neighboring South Africa tell of frustrated clients competing to sell their points online with little or no buyers. Is the offloading of one's points to get out of the agreement as simple as it has been made to sound? Of course you would have to lower your price Okay, you, you look at the market price at that time. Well, obviously, if you want your points to be more attractive, you'd have to lower it. But now, if you've owned them for a couple of years, you find you still make a good profit. What has been our disgruntled member's experience? Has he attempted to sell his points to get out of the scheme? I have in the past um, asked them uh, about the option to, to leave. And they did tell me that I would have to find someone to sell to sell to sell them to, and um, before I had raised the the complaint of the the resorts, the choice of resorts that we we would qualify for, you know, because to begin with we had ten points, and then we were told that um, no, the the issue is not. Uh, the resorts it's the number of points that you have so it would serve you better if you bought more points and we did that and yeah I would say it, it got a bit better but you know all the other elements still remain the resorts are out of town you still have um, those annual membership fees and you know the the option to 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 get out is almost non-existent Consumer Watchdog points to the fact that if a consumer defaults on agreed upon payments, there can be significant financial repercussions. The company owed the money can list an individual as a bad payer and ruin their relationships with other institutions. We've been fairly successful. I, I'm all credit to Hotel Express International, who I mentioned earlier. Um, they've been very open to us when we pass complaints through to them that someone's been missold this, this, this card's membership. Very often, they come, very often they come back to us and say, yep, yeah, we'll look into this. And then in a number of cases, they've ended up refunding people, which is fine, all credit to them. I said earlier, I don't blame them necessarily for these mistakes happening. I do think they should try harder to stop them happening because they keep on happening. Mm. 
but it's presumably a rogue salesperson or salespeople they've got. But it's their job to keep them under control and stop them from happening. Uh, we had limited success with the Holiday Club. Sometimes people get their, their membership cancelled, not always. Um, so I think the, what we need to do is to keep up that pressure on the industry of saying, look, we, we do have a right to cancel a contract. We do have a right to a refund if it's been missold. We're not going to stop. And I think consumers should, they shouldn't stop standing up for their rights. They should also be very careful about signing up for them in the first place. When someone calls you late at night or in the evening selling you these things, whatever you do, even if you like the idea, even if you always wanted to join, please don't give your credit card number or your debit card number over the phone to someone you've never met before. Mm -hmm. Find a different way of paying. Find a different way of joining if you want to. I don't think you should, but if you do, that's your right to do so. But don't give your card details over the phone to anyone who you don't know and don't trust. At the beginning of this program, we said we would let you, the First Issues viewer, draw and share with us your own conclusions on this subject. And we wrap up our presentation with some parting shots from some of the members of this evening's panel. The key thing is to, you have to be very careful. I mean, we heard from uh, a consumer recently who was, had been a member of Hotel Express International. And she got a call one evening. Uh, she was aware that it was about the time to renew her membership. So she got this call. It wasn't a surprise that it came through. And it was the same person who'd sold her the membership the year before. Mm. And this person said, fine, let's renew it. Everything's fine. This is the price. And she said, OK, let's do it. Mm. Renew my membership. Only to find that this person didn't actually work for Hotel Express International anymore. Mm. She'd moved on to another company called Hotelia Travels, oh who'd no longer answer their phone, who don't answer emails. I don't know if they've gone under. This was a registered company in South Africa. But that's fraud. There is a, a real benefit to, to being a member, but it's, it's a question of um, how often do you want to go on holiday or how often can you go on holiday, you know? Um, and then the issue then becomes the choice of the resorts. Are you comfortable with the choice of the resorts that you, that, um, you have at your disposal? If holiday club, packages and you're thinking 28,000 is, is, is way too much for me to get into a lifelong contract. I'd like to encourage Botswana generally to start traveling, for instance, within this country. Uh, I holiday a lot and Botswana Tourism Organization has been doing uh, a great job of telling people you can, you can do really exciting things. And with those closing arguments, we conclude tonight's deliberations. From me, Namedzo, the team behind First Issues, and our sponsors, First National Bank, we wish you a good night and pleasant viewing.